welcome to the Tuesday, October 30th meeting of the Montpelier Design Review Committee. I will let staff and members introduce themselves. Meredith Crandall, staff. Stephen Everett. Eric Gilbertson. Seth Mitchell. Benjamin Cheney. Uh, unless anybody else has anything to bring up, do I hear a move to approve the agenda? So moved. Do I hear a second? I second. And all in favor of the agenda, raise your hand. So we'll go to forward with the first application for 100 State Street, continued from the October the 15th hearing, owner Capital Plaza Corporation and Mary Heaney Trust, applicant city of Montpelier. This is a proposal for the parking garage. Um, and just in terms of introduction, I also have to admit that I am a, an abutter to the Heaney lot. Uh, I own a property that's adjacent to the Heaney lot, but I have no uh, predisposition one way or the other because of that. So if anybody has any concerns, I'm okay with it either way. Okay, so go section. ahead and present the newest iteration of the parking garage. Thank you. Uh, for the record, my name is Greg Rabideau from Rabideau Architects, and uh, also with me this evening is um, James Finley Shearis from uh, Wagner Hodgson, our landscape architects. Um, I gave this to you in print form. I also have it for the screen. Uh, there are a couple of extra sets here. There's like three extra sets if anybody in the audience is dying to have one. Um, what I thought I would do is focus on the issues that were most important to, the, to this board last time we met, which was there was some discussion about an arch feature that was kind of found to be architecturally not entirely relevant. And uh, um, I think we got back with, with our client, which in this case was uh, the mayor and some folks in city government, and kind of talked to them about where we were. And we've come back with a new proposal, which eliminates that arch um, in favor of a couple of things. Uh, this one gesture solves a number of problems, but if you look on the cover sheet, you can begin to see that uh, the, uh, the solution to our problem is probably best illustrated on this. Oh, Jesus. I'm forgetting this rendering here, which is just the same thing, a little blown up. And, sorry. <laughs> sorry. Um, uh, well, what's been done here is that we've raised up a boardwalk that spans between the garage and the bike path so that as the bike path comes around from the uh, east or from the west by the hotel there's a large landing area there which is at the um, bike path level it's elevated above the floor level of the garage at this point. Um, Eliminating that arch feature in favor of uh, having this boardwalk come up to the building and then at, at uh, human scale, we've got some smaller art panels shown uh, that complement the larger art panels above. Those could, be, um, uh, those could be regular pieces of abstract art or they could be something that re uh, relates to the history of uh, Montpelier. For the painted on parts of the uh, artwork, we've agreed that we'll, that we'll have a public process where the actual art itself is procured. Um, you can also see on this image, which is kind of a blow up of it, um, uh, you can see this set of relationships including the, uh, the uh, ramp which was added on the east side of the parking garage. It takes us up from existing grade to uh, bike path elevation, uh, stopping off at the midpoint uh, for uh, pedestrians coming out of the garage to collect into this same feature. So people coming out of the garage going to the downtown would come out this side door here shown in the lower right hand corner and up the bike up, up the ramp to the uh, to the bike path proper and across the bridge and over to downtown on the bike path. The other, the other access is across the uh, west side of the building or the east side of the building? There's a, uh, there, there is still a walkway that goes between the hotel and the proposed garage which comes down and connects to this, uh, to this boardwalk at the bike path. Okay, but I'm not talking about the east side of the building. There's the... Uh, oh, on the east side. There's trees and stuff in the way that I could see. It goes past the two entrances to the... Uh, That's illustrated for the parking garage and out. 
if there's a drawing, a layout of plan, I don't know where the right one to look for. Um, okay, I think I found it. If I, if I look on C1.1, which is yeah. our which is our site plan proper for the garage, if I think I understand what you're asking, Eric, starting from State Street, there's a, a painted bike lane that runs down the Haney lot, avoiding the backs of parking spaces, and resolving itself at this um, uh, access drive to the Overlook Park property. You know, that's something that's protected by an agreement between the owner of that parcel and the, and the, uh, the owners of the Haney lot. Um, and then down at the lower corner of that access to the Overlook Park parking area, you can see where there's a, a level landing pad and then the ramp starts up and wraps around the south east corner of the building and up to the ramp, up to the uh, boardwalk. Um, and that ramp is something I ride my bicycle up? Well, it's it's accessible. It's it's designed per the ADAG and it's wider than normal, but uh, uh, we still think that uh, the city ought to put up a sign that encouraging people to walk their bikes on the uh, boardwalk. Um, this is going to be a confluence area where bike riders coming from over on One Taylor Street or from downtown are going to converge on this boardwalk area. Um, I, I just I just see somebody coming down that in, in a bike. I mean, you could do it on a bike comfortably, but what happens if you run into a pedestrian going the other way? And it's a sharp can course. you stop fast enough to avoid clipping? Or on a schooner. Yeah, <laughs> any number of things. I expect, I mean, we're And you're constrained by this dotted line here, that corner. That is the... Uh, setback this why, why dash, it can't be any wider this this dash dot line is the uh, 20 foot setback um, as we understand it uh, the um, uh, in this district within that setback you can you can impact you can impact 50 percent of it and I think that's what the reg says that it's a 20 foot setback well there's there's it's a 20 foot water setback yeah but in the UC one, it's a 15-foot riparian buffer. Okay. And with so, you've got. This is one of the things we need to hash out. That's still a potential right. issue now that you added in the ramp right. under the zoning regs for the um, ERB level. I will say that we've discussed this with the civil engineering team, and and it's their position that this is a channelized stream bank. And that would solve. By that virtue issue. of the fill material and the stone, mm -hmm. uh, the stone facing that's been put on the banks there. Um, uh, this is not a uh, unconstrained river. So this is that's something we'll be dealing with at the development review board. Uh, but yeah, I mean, uh, uh, there is a property line there as well, and we, can, we right. obviously can't go over that. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and in all of this, I think the renderings show it. Uh, we still need to have the volume underneath it empty for stormwater purposes. Yep. Which it's still doing. Greg, did you want us to turn the lights off so you could show any of this up there? Um, if the audience the would like to see any of it, we could. I mean, it's it's probably easier for me to go through the paper version, okay. but uh, um, you know, I'll put the uh, I'll put the rendered image up, and if if anybody wants to see that, we can just turn the lights off. Would anybody like us to turn the lights off so you can see what's up on the screen a little bit better? Maybe we should. So that's that's the image anyhow, and what we're talking about is right in the middle of the image where you can see those colorful panels. Um, we've changed the design to include this boardwalk, which will be up at the bike path elevation, and that basically gets rid of the arch as a concept on this, which is fine. I think. I, um, have so, you, have you thought about any benches or anything on the, the deck that's there? It's pretty good size. Um, we have thought about some site furnishings. I know that the package that's submitted for the fifth uh, includes the um, the uh, built-in tool racks. Here's the. I'm just uh, if I can. I don't know if I can zoom in on this. Was there any more discussion regarding the trellis? I don't know what we're calling them. The steel um, the sort sculptural of features. Sculptural features. Yeah, that's my. Uh, I'm going to go to that next. But okay, I, I just wanted to uh, zoom over and show you the boardwalk. Yes, yeah, sorry. Up in detail, so you can see there are uh, 
the little red things are the bike repair station. One of them is a pump, and the other one is a is a rack that's got Allen wrenches, and spanners, and stuff on it for people who you know want to stop and fix a tire. Or and then you can see there's a little bit of an arrangement of uh, of uh, benches there as well. Um, and the decking is proposed to be pressure treated. EPA, I don't know. Uh, I don't know about tr pressure treated. What we think, what we think it would be is we would use solid concrete plank to span the opening, yeah. and then we dress it with a uh, with a suitable tropical hardwood to uh, to uh, provide the walking surface and make it more boardwalk like. Um, the idea being that we want to discourage people from rollerblading and stuff into this sort of pause point. Uh, slow people down a little bit, so I think having that surface helps. Um, this would be a good place for a bike rack, too. Yes, uh, and we are still planning on putting bike racks in the garage, um, but I I don't know if we've indicated any on the site here. I, I think this is a nice addition because uh, yeah, I like that. it's a gathering place, and I don't know how much of a, a view of the river it has from there. Uh, I mean, you've got the railroad bridge right there. Uh, I just, I can't, I, I assume there's a pretty good view of the river. Or at least um, the back yeah, of the I, stuff on more. You know, obviously the river bank is on the other side of one Taylor Street. Uh -huh. um, but the, for the North Branch, um, you know, the, the area in and around this, this um, bike path as it comes up onto the new bike path bridge is, it's, it's going to be a real uh, place to congregate. I think it's a huge improvement from the last go around. The, uh, the other question I had is uh, Paul Carnahan wrote a very thoughtful letter about uh, uh, access to the river. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I think, in, and I thought of it afterwards, yes, this really does block the river. So it's, I think it was really good to provide those accesses in a really clear way. And. I don't know whether anything can be done. I think it might be a place for art is on the entrance to the alleyway between the hotel and the parking garage. Oh, okay. If you had something, just a sign that says to the river walk, you know, maybe with some nice images. Okay. So people would really clearly know that was that was a way to get to the to the river. And uh, I'm I'm big on benches. Yeah, my knees tell me to be that way. But uh, you know, to add some benches so people can right. that can serve as a meeting place for people, or people can sit there and rest or whatever. All right. Well, I, as you can see, we've indicated five benches. They're kind of in a yeah. I'm, I'm thinking about at the entrance, although on the other side, on the uh, uh, other side. Oh, okay. Yeah. And you know, a sign on this end of it. Signs that say appropriate, you know, to State Street. You're saying right there where it says proposed eight foot wide. Path. Yeah, the, the there's the front door. Path. There's the front door of the garage. Yep. And then there's the path between the two buildings with the property line between them. Yeah, and so, something out on the away from the riverside, then on the north side, I guess. I think that's something we could stipulate without having to come back. Yeah, I mean, we, uh, uh, we would happily agree to that. But uh, just uh, in some place it makes it look like an attractive way to go for people. Yeah, and, and obviously the wayfinding stuff is, is important as well. Uh, let me back to you. Hold on one second. If you want, I don't know if, how you want to run it tonight, but when you do ask a question, you're going to want to come up to the I microphone so everybody can hear I you. So gonna, hold on one second. I was going to suggest that as well. Why don't you come up sure. to the microphone, sure. introduce yourself, sure. and then ask the question that you would like. Yeah. Um, so, hi. I'm Elizabeth Parker, and I've been um, very much interested in um, this uh, bike access, and I'm excited about what you're doing with regard to the area um, uh, where you can repair bikes and sit. My question is, um, as it's drawn now, and it may just be the surface that you're trying to describe, but I just wanted to make sure that if there is going to be a railing along 
the top of the retaining wall, that it is going to make a sharp turn back along the side of this terrace that you're creating and not run along to the bike path, that that is all going to be open space from um, the uh, north-south side of the terrace over to the other side of the terrace, that there's going to be, it's going to be easily accessible. Is that the concept? Well, um, or what are you conceiving of there? This is the this is the bike path proper here where my cursor is, and and all of this land up here with these trees and stuff shown right. is at bike path elevation. This little area in here, as it, well as these two triangles of space are here, below. are down below by right. like six feet. I I understand. So we're showing a railing going across here, perfect, and, and then along yes. here. Yes, that was my question. Back to that corner. That's exactly wonderful. We uh, don't know and uh, can't say anything definitive tonight about the uh, final disposition of a, of a fence along the train tracks. Because yeah. Tom McCardle brought up the, uh, the notion that it may be a problem to have a fence on both sides of the tracks. That, that was my question. I just wanted to make sure that that's where the railing was going to go and that it wasn't going to continue along um, and then uh, that little section that runs uh, right there. Right Whoops. Here. No, down. Well, it doesn't matter anymore. You, you've answered my question. Thank you. Okay, great. Yeah, and then this, this cro the, the formal bike path crosses over to uh, the one Taylor Street lot and it's to become Confluence Park right down here. Um, we can go to the next page here if it'll let me. All right. Um, well, here you can see that fence that she was asking about here going across the top of that. Um, what I was trying to bring up are the last few pages in the set. Um, sorry, not my, not my laptop. And I'm going to have to do this then. So I've prepared for you three options, and I don't know why these are squished like that. The proportions are weird because this sidebar menu that I would love to close, but I don't know if I can. Do you know how to close this menu here? Or? Yeah, if you click this the little small arrow right there. Maybe you can go to full screen. I don't know where that is. Yeah, there you go. Thanks. And Control L will make it full screen. Well. Forget the vertical proportions for a minute. This is option one, which would be to, what I've done is I've pre presented three options with the opening decorated in a distinctive way so that we can talk about these openings. Um, because the building's a big, complicated thing and there were lots of moving parts, we didn't articulate every rendering with every option because we just don't have it in our budget to do that. Um, but here's, here's what we're calling option one. This is a uh, dimensional steel frame that's sort of forms a portal arch within the masonry and then it's braced by a couple of diagonal braces with some uh, some big um, uh, plates, big plate connectors at the corners. This is on the uh, north side of the building? The this, this would be any of those masonry portions where we've got the big opening. So this is, an, okay. this is one of the alternative ways of decorating those large openings. Um, we're doing something very similar on a project right now in South Burlington called Larkin Terrace. It's a, on Shelburne Road down by the McDonald's in Burlington. And we we're using the steel to chase around the openings with the masonry like this. And what it does do is it gives us an actual load carrying member that can act as the lintel for that large masonry opening. Um, and it also gives us a uh, sort of tidy transition between the, the brick and the structure behind because I can use this frame element to uh, um, to define that line. And then what you're seeing in the background, which is going to be common to all of these, is a um, uh, proposal. This is a uh, fiberglass fabric that's 50% open. It forms a sort of solid screen on which we can have um, it, um, images printed. And what I'm, sh what I'm showing here is, um, is that screen, that scrim, if you will. Um, and I've, I've printed on it sort of industrial looking gears and stuff you know, thinking about this thing as a railroad trestle bridge. and So at any rate, what the scrim would do is it would hide the precast elements behind and sort of 
provide a sort of solidness to this opening so that these sculptural elements can kind of play in that space without... Uh, without I think sort of, these would be fairly easy to change, too, wouldn't they? Uh, yeah, I think, they, I think they're meant to last for a good long time, but they could be changed over time, yeah. Is that what's also preventing me from falling out? Yeah, it would, do, it would, do, it would uh, provide for free ventilation at the same time. It would keep you from going in, or uh, it, sh it should be helpful in terms of keeping snow and wind-driven rain and stuff from getting in on those intermediate levels as well. So this is, this is an option to that problem, but it doesn't I have to. that would be another great place to have a competition. For the, for, the, for the screen printing of the material? Yeah, the, whatever the design is. Yeah. Not, not uh, I mean, I can think of, uh, it, in some places, a photograph of a train might be a good thing to do. I'm assuming you can blow up photographs and image think, you want. I think the sort of more graphic and abstract it is, probably the, the longer the lifespan it'll have, uh, as far as, I'm sorry, I'm, what I'm trying to do here is Go to the next option. All right, so here's the original um, concept plan. Again, it would have that scrim material behind it. And then you've got these four inch steel pipes that are, are wending back and forth, as you can see them this way, but they're also going back and forth in the plane. Um, this was my original concept, and I still like it, so I'm going to keep it on the list of options. But um, I, I, I think one thing is. You know, we've always intended for that to have some color on it. So this is, I think, me showing it with uh, a variety of colors happening. And then there was one last version of this, which would be a very traditional thing that's being done in, interest, in interesting ways these days. Um, it's a perforated masonry screen wall. So we would have the mason lay this up in an interesting pattern, and occasionally the shaded parts would be spots where we would have them leave a block out. Um, they can turn bricks partially, leaving them project, or, or otherwise give this a very sculptural look. Um, this is a pretty solid looking thing, though. I, I, I think the idea has some currency in the design world right now, and it certainly works with us as far as you know, providing a ventilated wall that's still solid. Um, I'm not sure this is my favorite option, but it is an interesting idea. I, th I think it just would be a challenge to find a mason to do it well. Just give me an idea of how many openings you would use one of these treatments on. Um, I can't figure out to count them, but... Uh. The, the, the four outside corners of the building are essentially where the solids are. There are two more interior masses that are solid as well, so there's six potential locations for this. And, uh, and uh, I, would, I would like to suggest that we use one approach to all six. Yeah. Because we'll have other variety going on art-wise. Um, uh, as much as I still like my original idea, I, I, I'm also uh, really kind of fond of option number one as well. It it's sort of speaks to what our original design intent was, which was uh, to uh, sort of recall the adjacent rail bridge in, a, yeah. in an abstract way. Oh, sorry. There. Um, yeah. I, I think for those of you who are, who are looking for this steel thing to be more understandable as having a job to do and a purpose for being there, this is pretty strong in that regard. And we have a lot of flexibility and creativity that we can employ on this, uh, this screen fabric material. I, I, I think uh, I, I like number one. I mean, you can vary it with different designs in the background. Yeah. I agree. Option one is, yeah. I, I like it a lot. So I'm a little worried about all the different designs, like between the murals and then like having all these different panels of like yeah. trains and gears and just, it begins to feel like a lot to me. I mean, I would have to sort of, and then with the plantings and, you know, it's yeah. like. Yeah, the scrim doesn't have to be a graphic though. It can just be scrim. Understood. It yeah, could I, be very subtle, you know, yeah. blacks and grays. Well, yeah, that's what I'm hoping. And then, the, yes. and then the steel structure could replicate the the railroad bridge, which is already there anyway, which is you know yeah. the the standard railroad truss of the time. Yeah. I think it's a nice tie-in rather than the abstract. Okay. Yeah. I like the the meeting of the steel and the brick, and 
you know, yeah. we've done this yeah. recently and I've really been thrilled at the results just because it, um, yeah, I mean, uh, the, the Masons like it, you know, and it, it does serve this real structural purpose and it tidies up a lot of details. Those of us who use brick veneer understand our corners and times when things come together where you're like, how are we going to hide this? Yep. Uh, this does that. Um, if if the board were a solid yes on one of these options, and I'm and I'm hearing some support for one, um, we would we would just propose to apply this everywhere it occurs before we go to the development review board for final approval. Um, yeah, I, I would would suggest uh, a design competition for the background. Just I, I mean that gets public involvement. It gets people interested in the in the project. It, makes it understandable publicly and I maybe you could work with the Vermont Council on the Arts or yeah uh, I don't think you should have to do that but I think that as part of the project it would be interesting it would produce some variety so all of these things would look the same so the scrim is the representation is just a placeholder is what it amounts to uh, I'm, I'm suggesting that there's a lot of flexibility there, and, and I think, as with all the public art, that you know, if art conveys meaning, and, and what that meaning is really ought to be, you know, it's up to the city to express that, um, if that if that makes sense. The uh, how how much do you estimate those panels cost? The fiberglass. Panel well, I, I haven't priced them out, but you know, five thousand bucks maybe. They're not that terribly expensive. Um, this this art, the you know, the art that's painted on would probably be you know, bolder and meant to show more. Um, but you know, this would go from these from these to that to that more restrained kind of look, which. Probably plays better with the storefront and some of the other stuff we've got going on black metal wise. I, 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 th I think the idea of the gray and subtle look of that as a background is great. I mean, you already have the center art yeah. work. Right. And then you've got the greenery around, and to try to make this stand out, it's, it's competing too much with everything else. So I think. The more subtle it is, yes. uh, yeah. I think it'll draw the attention to the other components better. I think you're right. And you can sort of see here this background with just a plain gray scrim behind it. And really all it does is it hides the precast parts in a kind of a meaningful way. That's you know? kind of what I was, my question. So in section, if I was to look through that thing, I'm going to see sort of the diagonal slope of the, of the ramp going up to the next level. Yeah. Yeah. And so the scrim allows, yeah. so I don't... So you don't see those those transitions. And then you wouldn't have those, to put railings at two elevations know, the, at some sort the of The design edge. is subtle in color, and everything, they're not going to clash with each other, even if they're quite different. Yeah. You know, different focus. I, I agree. And Montpelier really has a tradition. How many projects have we reviewed for art on the, on the streets? A lot. A number. Yeah. And it's... It, it's been something that Montpelier is doing. Uh, I well, shouldn't remember the name of the architect. War choice. Yeah, war choice. I just wanted to ta add in, this is relatively new. At last week's city council meeting, the city council adopted a public art master plan and the created of a city arts commission. Um, so they would probably be a logical group that would guide a process for something like this so that is as you as you know more public art is coming into play and there's there's a plan coming together for how to deal with it that's great thank you bill we could get some graffiti people to do it <laughs> <laughs> well you know they <laughs> might be what it goes in they painted the back side of the champlain right trans cars. transportations <laughs> thing and they did they had a bunch of street <laughs> artists come do it it was amazing what they came up with some of those guys are really good really good yeah i uh I think that's gone legit. Banksy selling paintings for millions of dollars and then chopping them up. Yeah. <laughs> that was pretty good. That's yeah. Yeah. Worse it's more it's chopped, chopped up than it was. It, uh, the, the, the trick is not exactly what to encourage to do, expansion right? of the uh, of yeah. the area. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There was one last image I wanted to bring up if I can. Sorry, I'm having trouble navigating here. 
I'm going to do this. Yeah, I really do like one because it provide it can provide some variety and and it looks and it, it makes structural sense. Uh, the just cross pieces made no structural sense to me. Okay, I'm bringing this image up for, for one purpose only, and that's to show what the possibility of putting a solar array on the roof of this garage might look like. And what we've presented is that the project is designed so that it can accommodate this kind of thing. Um, I don't think it's in our initial budget to provide this solar panel, um, but I'm going to float the idea out there that, that this is how we would go about it, which would be like a solar carport that did not extend out to the edges of the building, uh, but only covered the two center bays, and that would that would do a couple of things, you know, sort of reduce the apparent mass of the building. Um, I brought this up because I think some there there were some comments by the public who were curious about this and whether or not it was something we still were interested in, um, and would would love to have your input on on whether or not you think this is appropriate. Um, but at the same time, I'm not really asking you to take action on this because I don't think we're offering up solar panels coming out of the gates. Um, but, but I did include this image just for the purposes of having that conversation. It, it, huh, uh, how much taller? It looks quite a bit taller than the uh, corner stair wells. Uh, yeah, well, it's going over the uh, ramp in a way that it's 8 feet at one end, so it's the, the end that we're looking at is up 13 feet. That's one issue with doing it, is that you're going to see it. It's going to be, it's going to be up there. Will you see it? At, like if I'm walking along State Street, looking uh, up, I mean, I realize it's pulled back enough so that. Yeah, you'd probably see it. I it probably wouldn't jump out at you as anything outrageous, but at yeah. any rate, um, I just wanted to show that to you as part of the conversation, but not necessarily a uh, uh, sort of central issue. Uh, for this evening. Is it, is it possible to construct a building so this is really easy to put up? It's po it's possible for it to be structurally sound enough to take the extra weight for us to have the weld plates and stuff in the tops of these shear walls so that if, if the city elects to do this and, and just, because you uh, get a grant or, or somebody wants, you know, um, then then we would then the building would take it. It's going to have conduits going up to the roof and everything. And even even to the point of the fastening, so that it would be really easy to fasten it. Right, that's what I'm thinking. Yeah, is that we'd we'd have the buried uh, weld plates in the tops of these precast panels, so that if somebody wanted to attach this, they could. Anyhow, it was sort of a sidebar issue, but I wanted to be responsive on that. Um, there was also something I uh, I wanted to talk about because. I think this gets it. Um, it's been mentioned in a couple of public hearings that the, the people don't understand how our images could show the garage being taller than the bridge, uh, or, or, but it looks shorter in certain from certain perspectives. And I just want to point out that the reason that happens is because the floor plane of the garage is 10 feet below the the western abutment of this bridge, so we're starting out in a fairly deep hole to begin with. The bridge is 25 feet tall, but it starts from a point that's 10 feet taller than the, the building's first floor. <laughs> and just by virtue of being in the foreground, the bridge does look bigger in some of these issues. But uh, we're, we're, um, we're confident that these models are accurately representing the buildings as proposed. So I'm just, with that said, I don't have any more formal. I think we, we had three things to talk about, how this project connected to the bike path, what to do about that arch, and what to do about those decorative openings. Those were the big three takeaways I came with from our last meeting. But everything's on the table, and I've got everything with me if anybody wants to talk about any now particular quick, edge. Quick question. What's the difference with the bridge over the north branch? Where that, what's at, at grade on the other side, on the parking garage side of the north branch? What's the difference between the grade there and the crossing over the tracks? Well, it all kind of comes up to about 528 at the bridge abutment. So the railroad track and the bike path are all sort of up around 527, 528, right there at the west end of that bridge. Um, and then it drops down to natural grade of like 519 uh, 
and we've graded some areas in that that those the sort of pit behind behind the garages. Um, that's excavated down to 518. So there's a there's a 10 foot drop. Please go back to the view you had before. Sure. <clears throat> so from the hole you just had your your here. cursor. And, uh, no, the one further right there. Yeah. How how deep is that? Well, the floor elevation is 518. And the top of it. The is? top of this wall here in this location is going to be, uh, I think. 525 right at the corner of the building so and then this about a seven or seven six seven eight foot hole there. right at, at at the at this this little wedge of space is down in a hole about six seven feet and then the tracks and everything are subtly rising up to 528 right in here top of the normal top of the bank is a, is, is at roughly 518 right along here so this was all designed to just be a top of bank elevation so if it ever flooded, <coughs> the waters would come in and go back out without needs of pumps or... Other. And that, uh, you're not putting any trees in there or anything? Well, uh, we are actually proposing quite a bit of landscaping in there, but, um, you know, we didn't show it in our renderings for purposes of... Uh, um, this is, this is uh, what the landscape plan looks like, or the, what the building looks like with the with the actual proposed birches in front of them. And what James has done is he's, he's made those birches a little bit transparent so you can kind of read behind it. Boy, this is tough. The landscape plan will show the birches. Yeah. So you can, you can see the trees here are ghosted in in the foreground. And then you see an initial growth of the vines going up the green screen. Here's, here's those benches again up on the boardwalk and these little individual art panels along here. And then the major art panels up above. And you can also see here where we've programmed some circular openings into the green screen and the plant stuff is kind of growing around them. Uh, there we go. So you get to see the bike path and the, uh, the ramp. I have two sort of questions. One is, um, is this bridge a placeholder? Is that something that you've designed? Are you responsible for this pedestrian bridge or is that just something else? The uh, bridge across the uh, river is a separate oh, project call. designed by Stantec and already approved. I think it's going to be constructed soon. Um, okay, so that's... So no, uh, yeah. we did design the uh, the ramp coming up from the Haney <clears throat> lot to the boardwalk. But yeah. And then, uh, I guess what sort of been other issues, and now I'm beginning to sort of focus a little bit on the cornices and sort of some what the materiality of that horizontal bands are. Okay. And we'd just like to hear a little bit more about what that is. Uh, well, before we move on to that, I was wondering if there's somebody in the audience sorry. who had a question about something that was being talked about. Yeah. Um, Intr I, introduce yourself. Yeah, I'm Meredith and Kitfield. Uh, I live here in Montpelier, and I'm interested in um, lighting. Um, how is this going to be lit up? And I don't see any uh, lights or posts or. And also, I'm concerned that it's going to be adding to light pollution um, in our city. So I'm wondering what kind of lighting you're going to be using so that it's directed down, downwards, as opposed to letting it just go up to the sure. sky. Thanks. Thank you. Um, go ahead. All lighting for the project is um, uh, LED lighting. And all of them have what they call controlled photometrics, so they're down casting shielded lights. Um, we have um, typically on the sort of street-like portions of the project, which includes the hotel and a drive-in from Taylor Street and then back out to State, and all the public ways is this type SL1 here, which is a very traditional looking housing with a uh, with an LED, uh, with, with LED guts. And um, so this is, a, this is really beautiful, elegant type fixture that's, uh, that's going to be most of the site lighting here. And, uh, 
uh, those those do have controlled photometrics. We did submit a plan showing point by point the uh, um, the values uh, for that. I'm just sorry. Uh, in addition to that, there are um, the light fixtures inside the garage itself, which. One, I think there are other, other ones that I've seen around there. Okay, well, that was. Yeah. Some of those. Yeah, well, some of these are just wall mounted. Yeah. These happen around doors and stuff like that. They're nothing special. The SL8 is out in the back, though, area, right? By the boardwalk? Yeah, let me close this down. <clears throat> Uh, this is uh, these are these are ground mounted lights that are meant to shine up and I assume they're pointed at the artwork no but they wouldn't be actually I, I, I did the come up and introduce yourself yeah, sorry. it's okay the microphone's actually on the other side uh, James Finley Sheriff's landscape architect um, the idea for these lights were to create a glow down in those um, flood gullies uh, that we've been talking about with the birch plantings. They'd be pointed horizontally, so they would give a glow if you looked over, but we've done the photometric plan on it and there's no light creep from it as they're protected uh, by the six foot retaining or eight foot retaining wall and the building on the other side, so there'll be no light creep from them. They'll just create a nice sort of glow that you'd look over the, the side of the railing at. Um, all the other light fixtures are cutoff fixtures and so they've been designed to meet the security uh, foot candle minimums with no uh, night sky issues. And talk, talk a little bit about the color temperatures you're choosing. We're going to be using all of the yellow uh, 3000 Kelvin, so it won't be the white blue LED. It'll be nice, sort of yellowish light, you know, Warm white. mimicking incandescent. That's right, or the MR16s of the, the old halogen world. The fixtures within the garage and then on top, top level. Those are a little different. I was looking for those. I did. I did show those to you at the last right. meeting, but the ceiling-mounted light fixtures and the oh boy. Could I just make one observation? Yeah. Uh, this is Meredith Kitfield again. Um, so as I walk along the bike path currently, Stonecutter's Way has one type of light fixture, and then I go over by the high school, and they that section has a totally different kind of light fixture, you know, outdoor light fixture. Has there been any thought to kind of integrate the light lighting for the bike paths so that it's somewhat consistent or is that not a good theory? No, the bike path as it has been designed has a big a fixture and so the idea is that will be consistently along the bike path just need to um, as part of that standard project. So we use those foot candles within our photometrics survey uh -huh. but there is a consistent light going through the new Taylor Street and, and on in the new bike path. Which, which kind of fixture? The ones on stone cutters or the one on? It's, um, I'm not sure. It's, it's a Vega shoebox is what they call them. So it's a very simple rectangle about a 50 foot high. High school. It's the ones from the high school. Okay. So, yeah, Just so curious. Thank you. Thank you. Again, the thumb, then we've got a mouse. Make this go a little bit easier. It would go faster. Uh, ah, there is one. All right. Thank you. Could have a mouse. All right. Uh, fantastic. Ah. So, 
Thank you, Mike. Thank you. <laughs> this was the light fixture we talked about at the last meeting, which is a ceiling mounted light fixture. That goes up between the flutes of the garage deck, and that's uh, that's an LED fixture as well. And it is vandal resistant. The question was asked. Yep. Depends on which mounting system you use, but we wouldn't use the long pendants. Um, and top deck is Vega, or that's something else. The top deck is this, this same pole has a it has a pole mounted fixture for it. Uh, it's a little different than the street lighting. <coughs> what is it like a gooseneck off the pole? Um, I should be able to find it here now that I found the right folder. Dump to your spec. There, it shows you the side mount. Okay. Um, on all the hardware poles, everything is what a, a black. That would be my choice. Yeah, comes in black, silver, white, or bronze. I think, um, but I was thinking black. The, uh, all the rest of the site lighting would be black too. It seems more compatible with the rest of the structure. Right. Yeah. Steel, yeah, I agree. Yeah. So, oh. after you talk to uh, Ben's question about materiality of the project, with the cornice in particular, that you were mentioning, I, could you address? Um, I'm, I'm pretty sure we asked for options on the, uh, the, the picket fence on the lower level. As well. Okay. Um, the uh, the general material palette is is the standard common brick. The string trims and aprons that you see are um, are the uh, Vermont granite. And then um, we were going to have this made out of uh, either uh, uh, like a glass reinforced concrete or an EFIS just because we didn't want to have a lot of weight up there. And, and this is this is a pretty big cross section. This this cornice, so that would be built up. And then, yeah, I mean and GFRC then, would be definitely preferred over EFIS. Yeah, right. Uh, durability wise too, I think right. that's probably true. We don't. There's no advantage to having the insulation be involved really. Right. Um, but we would have these prefabbed and then bolted on the top of the wall. And then you're capping it. With an, there's an aluminum coping called to go over the top of the wall of it, just just as a weather course. Um, then we have the, uh, and it will be painted to be a similar speckle to the granite. The uh, um, the GFRC. The GFRC, yes, like a like a polo mix type paint. Uh, I thought you were talking about the coping. I think the coping. Oh would, no! In my mind, the coping was just going to be black. Yeah. But yes. I, I care more about that big, thick visual band being right. Similar to the Vermont granite. Yes, but um, obviously to get to get something two feet tall with a projection of about two feet, and, yeah. you know, for the f 800 feet of perimeter or whatever, it could get really expensive. So yes, we, we are definitely using the granite where where you're most likely to be able to see it, put your hands on it. Have you looked into uh, polymer composite? Oh, yeah, for instead instead of glass reinforced concrete. Yeah. Uh, I, yeah, either one of those I think would be appropriate. And it's really going to come down to what fits our budget best. <clears throat> um, and then the green screen, I have a piece of that, but that's uh, you know that's going to come with a factory finish on it. It's kind of a dark green. Then, is regarding your sort of like steps and why you've kind of broken it up horizontally the way you have, is there yes. a logic to it? That well, there's a couple 
there's a couple pieces of logic. One is the language suggested by the zoning ordinance, which I know doesn't necessarily apply in this design control district, but the intent of it, you know, something was brought up by one of the neighbors who popped into one of these meetings. Uh, if you read the, the standard, you know, broadly speaking, you know, the goal of that was to make sure that you didn't have one section that was longer than 48 feet long. Um, and that these things kind of read as individual three-story blocks with you know, the sort of vegetable spacing between them uh, was very much an intention to uh, sort of repeat more of the scale and, and, and rhythm of, of downtown Montpelier, which tends to be three, four-story masonry buildings. And, and they tend to be, you know, one business-wide, you know, historically. Yeah, um, I was speaking more of the specifically to the cornice as much as I am interested. Oh, in and as far as how much up and down it goes, was a, was that was just a reflection of its relationship to finished grade. So yeah. here it's it's more or less a sort of guardrail height. Um, but the ramp is falling away behind this, you know, so um, having them step up and down a little bit instead of having one consistent top line was part of that effort to sort of, again, kind of be suggestive of individual building blocks with uh, sort of green space between. Um, and the, so, you know, this landing over here is five feet higher than this landing, so, you know, the whole thing has popped up a bit so that this is, again, this parapet's kind of at handrail height uh, on this end of the building as well. It's usually the, the green screens are doing most of the reaching. James. Well, that was Liam. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you, Liam. <laughs> so we talked about different stuff. different growth stages as well. Is that something that you have represented as far as the green screen? What we wanted to do was show here sort of year three, four, uh, rather than the other, uh, the architectural renderings, which show it sort of fully grown. We thought sure. this was a nice sort of stage to, to look at it. And again, I was talking last time we met about the idea of the way these vines kind of find their way up the green screen is actually being kind of a beautiful thing uh, outside of just having a full, sort of a, a one solid texture of green. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, we like how it sort of climbs up to the top and then sets, it, sets its um, twines up there and then kind of come down and then we'll fill in and around the, around the, the apertures Greg's, Greg's made in the, in the green screen there. We want it to look good from day one. Day two, day you know, year right. one, year two, year three. So we think we've, we've come up with a nice solution. I have another question. Go ahead. Uh, this is Meredith Kitfield. Um, I was wondering, can some kind of banner be hung over that um, artwork? Let's say you were having a special festival in Montpelier and you wanted to put three banners up. Mm -hmm. Can you actually put something over that artwork? Yeah, yeah, it would be temporary. It would be like a, a flag, uh, some kind of a flag or a banner. Well, I think it's a great idea. I mean, we could certainly design the hardware in there to receive it, you know, some kind of U-bolts or something that people could hang on to. Um, these panels sit back from the main face of the masonry like four inches. They're, they're pushed back. They're, they're just in relief a little bit um, to give this wall some texture here and sort of express these, these pilasters. Um, and that was meant to give each piece of a frame, you know. Uh, but that, that gives you a, a space in which you could work if you wanted to do something like, you know. A lot of the people who make the same scrims that we're talking about here make precisely those kinds of things for like New York Fashion Week and yeah. that kind of stuff where they just cover the whole side of a building with something temporarily. Uh, I don't have it in my budget to provide the temporary art, but I, I don't see any reason why this couldn't be sort of set up to receive that. No problem. Could you hang something from that top lip, that white lip? That we probably you rather didn't do that. Oh, okay. Um, only because that's the sort of beginning of our waterproofing system, and generally oh. when <laughs> people start getting up there and drilling holes and stuff <laughs> over <laughs> time, water. It's plastic, right? The white This this would be well, it'd be a lot, something a little more. It wouldn't necessarily be plastic. It'd be a composite material. Uh, either fiberglass reinforced cement or there are some polymer based ones that are solid 
Um, but it, we're not talking about FIPON or anything here, right. if, if that means anything to you. Mm -hmm. So can somebody actually walk over to that lip up at the top? Or is that off limits? Uh, uh, well, at this end and this end, uh, it would be the top of the wall. The top of the parapet would be about 42 inches off the deck. Oh, so, so yeah, it's kind of like a barrier. When you're parked on level four and a half, you'll be able to stand right behind this wall and look out at downtown Montpelier. Oh. And this is level four down here. You'll be five feet lower, but you'll be able to look over the bridge. And so cocktail hour, right? <laughs> People use these garages for all sorts of things. I, you know, I fireworks viewing. I exactly. used. To, I remember when Ben and Jerry's used to show movies on top of Cherry Street Garage. That's right. It was a good time. Mm -hmm. um, so how about the picket fencing? Yeah. Uh, we have a cut sheet. Where did I put it though? Um, this is. I'm just opening this because this is our, our retaining wall. We should talk about that before we part company. Uh, what did you name? What did you label that thing? I think it was just called railing detail. It should be in that pack. For today's meeting. Yeah, I saw you guys were just talking about it. It's just a very simple sort of steel square railing. Yeah, I'm sorry. I've got a, a couple of things in here that. It was in the last one. I mean, worst case, we could turn the lights off and put the hard copy. And the vehicle charging stations. I don't want to forget that. So I'll just open that while I see it. Um, Excuse me. Could I just ask how many um, electric charging stations are currently budgeted? Just make sure to um, state your name. Oh, sorry, Laura Rose Montpelier. How many charging stations are currently in the budget for the garage? Well. Um, <sighs> We've got two pieces, we've got two data points. One is I believe that the city ordinance now requires so many electric charging stations per parking space. And based on that, I think we believe, I believe I came up with a quantity, quantity of 20. Um, now, uh, the city manager and assistant city manager, I believe, went up and toured the project in St. Albans. And the operators in St. Albans said that that would be too many. So uh, it's, it's it's uh, it's up for you to tell us how many you want because um, otherwise we'll provide 20 of them and I'm not sure uh, there's some policy level decisions that have to be made like are those exclusive use use spaces which I would suggest they shouldn't be um, and you know if if you're not going to use them right away do you want to spend the money or would you rather install them as they get in as they get absorbed but. To the, to the best of our knowledge, we have to present 20 unless somebody tells us that it's okay to do fewer. And how many are currently paid for in the current budget? Well, I don't know that any of it's sort of been given a line item in the budget, but uh, there's been a sort of generous equipment budget right along. I, I think that also includes like the ticket taking equipment and stuff as well. Um, so uh, I can't we've answer. Assumed, we've assumed that 20. I, I did hear that the number was four. And uh, that seems um, in other meetings. Um, so I'm wondering. Uh, I didn't know there was a number in the ordinance until I stumbled across it. And then once we did, we said, well, that's the, that's the answer. So 20 are required um, by current law. Thank you. Uh, a suggestion on the charging station. I, mean, some of the, I know some of the space is flexible to state for use. But if you install the infrastructure, the wiring for the charger, charging stations, and so it's just a matter of bolting it on. If you, you maybe install 10 and you have 10 that are easily the uh, access rules had uh, uh, a class of, you know, fully handicapped, and they had one that's called adaptable. Okay. So that the, you know, the plates and everything are in place. That's what I'm kind of thinking about that need, if you, if you need the extra ones. Uh, I don't know whether they'd all be in one place or not. At the well, the only thing they have, the only thing they have to be is they have to be above elevation 528. So they're going to happen on level one and above exclusively because they've got to be protected from flood inundation. Um, we have done a lot of these in our hospitality work with hotels, and generally, what what we've done in those circumstances is 
had an outside vendor install them, and the outside vendor makes a little money every time somebody uses it. Kind of similar to the ATM machines at a mm -hmm. gas station. You know, it's not really a bank, but, and, you know, they don't really have anything to do with it. Well, I'd, I'd probably convinced that there's going to be more demand for them in the future. That's the only thing I'm thinking of. Is well, I hope you're right, and I think your ordinance anticipates that. I think the policy level decision is really uh, would you want to make those spaces exclusively for the use of electric vehicles? Because if you do, then, you know, that's 20 spaces is a lot if they're not being used. If they're being used every day, great, you know. Um, but that's a policy level decision. It's not really a design issue. I know that this, this was about a, a, uh, a brand that we liked because it worked with both, uh, both types of battery formats and had the built-in uh, uh, accounting software and stuff like that. Um, you know, you'd need 10 of these, and we would probably put a couple on each level. Yeah, I'm just saying extend the wiring so it's real easy to, to, add, to, more. to add, because that's certainly going to happen. And this is pay for service. You pay for the power, yeah. yeah. I, I assume, I don't think I, the, the city would the get killed meter. if they didn't. Is that the way it works? I'm sorry, say it again. It's tied into the city's meter. Well, um, we're working with a specialty consultant on the, the hardware that runs the garage. I think in, in my experience, parking is one thing and charging is another. Because I think probably what will happen is when you, you come in, you'll get a ticket, and when you leave, you'll pay. Um, and if, if, if you need to charge your car while you're there, you'll do that transaction right at the post. That's my thought. I, how it's operated isn't really a design consideration. It's more no. of a public policy decision. Yeah. But uh, I don't see any reason why the city should give the power away. They can right. set those up just with a you stick your credit card in, and it'll charge for you know whatever power you use. Yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. assuming the revenue yeah. goes to the city. Yeah. yeah. Bill, are the ones being by city hall? Are they pretty well used all the time for charging? A lot of the times. No. Yeah. I, oh. <laughs> just don't know if the microphone can catch <laughs> way over there. Um, yeah, you know they're they're restricted for EV vehicles only. So, um, yeah, I think that you know I don't monitor them carefully. We're they're third party uh, revenue at this point, so the um, we're not monitoring yeah, their use. But uh, you know, just anecdotally, I'd say I see cars there more often than not. But did not, I wouldn't say it's hundred percent. Well, it's always been part of our thinking to have them. Our thinking has evolved recently to say we should have more. Um, and, yeah, the only reason I'm hesitating is is we're getting advice from other cities that are running garages that 20 might be an awful lot. So I don't know how you want to dispose of that issue, if it's really a, a issue for this board or not. Um, again, <clears throat> the, the number of charging stations can be changed at a later date with as Eric said with the infrastructure and beside the the number of those would be a point for the DRB to take up anyway. Okay. Good. Um, just for the record, I mean this is the retaining wall system that we're calling for. It's a uh, modular unit system with a nice dress face on it. Uh, it is not a cast in place concrete wall. I don't know if you want to say anything about it James but uh, I that is that's that is the wall we're proposing. This wall will tie into the bike path bridge wall, so there'll be a bit of working out as they presented a unit block wall. So we'll um, hopefully use ours. Is so, the design you show for the bike path bridge the one that I, I don't know whether it's a decision has been made on that or not? I mean, the bike path bridges that we have before are, are steel truss. Uh, right. Uh, no, I. I think that's just something that we gleaned from the civil drawings. We didn't have any of your options to show. I mean, obviously, that's not part of our project, so right. we're not asking for approval on that. Okay. I just thought maybe the city would know what the plan view layout is from the Stantec approved plans. From plan view, I don't know the interior the elevation of the bridge itself. Am I to understand that the base block is? Well, it's sort of shown in the upper left-hand corner there on the last slide that you just had up. Um, and then there are 
what I'm seeing on the bottom is a variety of faces that you could slide onto that. Correct. Um, yeah. And the one you have chosen for the face is the bottom left-hand corner? Um, yes, and the idea is that we get it in a color to sort of match the granite. Yeah. The idea is that it would be as close as we could get to that granite. And <clears throat> I'm assuming it has some sort of faux stone texture to it? That's it, yeah. Yeah, there's sort of levels of uh, undulation in that. In that. Yeah, something like that. You can see the two different levels of texture there quite well in that, so. Our, our, our goal is to, to match the natural stone as closely as possible. And do you build the whole thing with just the, the raw blocks and then put the faces on later? Or yeah, there's like, a, you can see actually in this, that's exactly right. So you set these base blocks and then you can slide on the uh, veneer pieces. Hmm. That's a new one from Unilock. Uh, yeah, I've never seen that before. Yeah. It's and I guess the idea is if something bad happens, you can replace it? You can pop it out, and then the other, the other idea is sort of you could articulate it the wall the way, the way they sure, and that sort of uh, the other piece with the sort of more texture could help you proportionally break up that wall right. a little you bit can, more and give yeah. you sort of a less. Are these fastened together with mortar, or are they just loose? Um, they will be, uh, we'll have a structural engineer review, obviously, whatever the final detail is, but I believe that mostly they're gravity block, but they will have tiebacks into the grade that they're retaining. Yeah, just and saying about tipping. About dip. Yeah, they'll no, they'll be pulled back. They'll have dead men yeah. pulled back with, with concrete. Yeah, that's I don't know if that's our issue or not, but I'm curious. Uh, we don't have a lot of surcharge. It's not like there's a big slope coming down from behind this wall, but you do have, with a railroad, you know, you've got some pretty dynamic loading. So we just have to make sure that the structural, occasional truckload of granite doesn't vibrate the thing into submission. Less than occasional, it's become more. It's good. Well, I'm happy if they're busy. Yeah, yeah that's no, good. No, it's oh, great. That's good. Um, sorry. Um, <clears throat> I'm trying to think of other loose ends here. Just I was still looking for the picket. Oh, the fence. Sorry. If you can't find it's it, it is in the packet. In the hard that we copies, gave you. I did see that. Yeah. Well, let me let me just say this. I'm not I'm not a fan I'll of the picket. Just a moment. I think it's not the way to go. I'd like to see something either horizontal or gridded off, some other treatment would be yeah. much, much better. We're, we don't love the horizontal because it sometimes can do get the ladder effect and then people climb sure. up and over it. Yeah. But, well, but I, you I have that going on here in all these railings. Uh, that, I think that's just a render artistic liberty with the rendering perhaps. Ours are, the way we've designed it is up and down. My understanding on that one detail would show them vertical. Sorry, let me yeah. find that. Well, whether it's horizontal or not, yeah. if it's gridded off, uh, you know, it seems like the picket is. So you're saying little, maybe a mesh panel or something? Yeah. You prefer. I mean, yeah. I, yeah. It just seems Fair like enough. the picket is, is a little bit of an afterthought. I mean, if you've really brought the rest of the project up and, and listened to many things, it just yeah. seems like the picket needs some attention. And then there was some debate as to whether we actually needed them. Some believe that we need them and some don't. Is that, are we uh, mandated by some sort a of? There is a, the code, anything more than 30 inch drop would require. Understood. But that, but, and so I wouldn't it use a, it anywhere else. It was a security. Yeah, yeah, I thought we were talking about. Oh, on the up. elevation of the building. Yeah. Oh, Greg can speak to that. I was just talking about the safety railings. I'm sorry, could you ask again? I was digging through this file. I couldn't. Curious about the need, the where the need for some of the picket fencing, especially at ground level, is coming so from. Sort of security at, five, at the bottom level there. If we still. Uh, have to you know, I think just in talking to the police and stuff, there was some concern about keeping people from wandering into the. I don't know how I got into that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, from people wandering into the garage from out mm. back, um, but uh, sorry. Um, yeah, so we were trying to keep people out of the lowest level in the garage. And that's what, that's their primary function. Right. That was, that was all of it. Um, can, 
can I speak to that just real quick? Please. So my understanding is that they're going to have security cameras at certain locations, like at the entrances, but they wouldn't necessarily have security cameras along that whole bottom level where the fencing is. But they need to be able to let the water in and out so they can't just put a wall there. Um, and then they have security cameras like in the stairwells and the pedestrian entr entrances. But they need to be able to have some idea of who's going in and who's going out. I think that's one reason they had the fencing. Yeah, just not finding that cut sheet. We do have paper copies. It just sits in here somewhere, but I got a lot of places to look. And I think somebody had another question. Okay. Hi, Elizabeth Parker here again. Um, so I I talked about this um, at the end of uh, two meetings ago, um, and it's it's just a little point, but. I have a, an editorial part of myself, and if things don't get changed, then I'm concerned that they will be this way. So my concern is, again, that handicap parking, I believe, in this diagram is shown in the northeast corner, uh, not close to the elevator, which is in the northwest corner. And I think it would be great if those could be contiguous. Am I incorrect, or I mean? There's the elevator. And here are some handicaps. Okay, because I'm looking at a different drawing here. Um, so maybe this is out of date. It, it could be, uh, but generally, the, generally they're between grid lines one and two on the level Perfect. and adjacent to the stair tower. That makes me very happy. We're showing. Is it a stair tower and it's in the northwest corner where there's an elevator as That's well? That's the elevator right Perfect. There. Okay, good. Moving on. Um, and so then my other question, and maybe I missed it just now because I was thinking about this question, this previous question. Um, it, on the east side, on the ground level, where the fence is going to be, is it going to be, I know that on the northeast side, there will be a fence that can be opened up should cars need to leave for some reason. Um, but on the east side, is there going to be the ability to have um, an opening fence still, which was discussed at one point um, on the ground floor, so that, for instance, if there was a need to have an event that you could go underneath and have some sheltering for a community event or some expansion of the market or some such thing. Um, you know, where uh, where is that stand now? I recall that conversation, uh, and and I don't see any reason why it can't happen, but I don't think it's illustrated on this plan. All right, I just think that it might be a nice um, feature well, I, for. I think we're in agreement about providing it. I just I right. just, you know and try to keep track of everything we talked about. We were focused on this entrance here, right. which then got you, you know, sort of out to the bike path and, and over to the main street. But mm -hmm. uh, uh, we were talking about one down at a grade around the corner, and I just I on the east side. It would it would be, you know, somewhere where these openings are. Yeah. So I'm just putting that out there as just being to, a just feature need to put that a symbol there indicating that that's an operable gate. Right. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Could, could you go back to the image of the deck in the back? Because I didn't see where the uh, alleyway ends up from the front. Yeah. I'm, so, I'm sorry, I don't quite understand. But, no. Where does the, from the alleyway between the hotel and the garage, okay, I see. I see why it didn't show up. Yeah, there it is. So it's, it it's, doesn't show up in that image, though. It's uh, hard to read in that image. I think in this image, it's it's going along the top yeah. of the wall here, okay, and turning the corner. Yeah, I just want to. So think. it's it's a little hard to see at this resolution, but no, I, I see where it is. I just it just doesn't show clearly at all in the image you were we were looking at. Yeah, and I, I think it's just it's just uh, sorry I can't no, really navigate this thing. I I, I just. I want to say again that you know, decorating that and signing it so it's an attractive space for people in a welcoming way. I think people tend not to like to go down alleyways even if they're lit, yep. and so making, you know, breaking that up and and so making a nice entry on the yeah. front side of the yeah. hotel. We have green screen wrapping around that, the sort of southern part of that right there. Right which there. Will, which so will enhance at least. 
know, that make half of it wonderful. So as you come between the buildings, you know, about, about after about 40 feet, you come out from behind this and then it's open into this garden. In the footprint of the building at the ground level, we've got some openings, some window openings from the fitness center to the alley as well, so okay. that as you're walking down there, you're, you're, you get some visual relief. But I, I agree. I mean, it's a, it's that's a um, that's a uh, tight. Those are tight quarters. Not everybody's going to like. Yeah, because feel other, other, I mean, it, the, the most we can do to keep keep the garage from sort of being a barrier to getting to the bike paths in the yeah. river uh -huh. uh, that's correct, yeah. would be good. Well, there's this, which I think will function really well for hotel guests. Um, you know, there's some outdoor patio area, and the swimming pool is down adjacent to this space as well. Um, but don't forget, as I pointed out earlier on sheet C1, um, the, uh, you know, the design has, has been improved to include that bike path connection through the Haney lot and out to State yeah. Street there as well, which I think people who aren't staying at the hotel are going to be much more likely to use. And just... Uh Maybe it's a space for some more creative kind of. So you see the bike path indicated yeah. here, all the way down to here, and then, you know. So I think that then you get on the ramp and you come up to it. And and both there and at the entrance to the other one, some some graphic that's big enough. Yes. That people know that they're they're headed that that's the way to head to the river. Something something you could see from State Street that would make. Sense. Yeah. Agreed. Signing to Compliments Park. Right. Signs and yeah. or yeah. some. I, I'm not a designer. That's, that's no, what you guys no. do. You make a good point. Uh, no, but I think wayfinding signage is important. We we do yeah. have a plan. Which I don't know if you if this board will get involved in that, but uh, um, we probably had we had a traffic plan. But I'm wondering. Um, I think it's at this. Side. I noticed the package you sent home was more than 65 pages. <laughs> well, that was a combination of the new stuff and the old stuff, so we would have everything. But and I, I thought some of the pictures really did a good job of showing what it might look like at night. <laughs> <laughs> That's the planning printer's fault. <laughs> Sorry, I was looking for a plan with the traffic signs on it, but uh, I'm not seeing it. Uh, Laura Rosemont, Peeler, I was wondering if I could ask about the width of the walkway between the hotel and the parking garage, how wide it is for that. Uh, the buildings are 10 feet face to face, and then we're showing an 8 foot wide walkway. And the walkway on the north side of the garage, how wide is that walkway? Uh, well, the uh, the constricting point would be the ramp, and I, th I believe the ramp is six feet wide. And does that f north walkway still put pedestrians in the path of cars entering and exiting the garage? Well, uh, if we go back to that civil engineering plan I had here a moment ago, um, in this particular case, uh, you know, there's there are crosswalks you know, from State Street to the main entrance of the garage, there's a major crosswalk here and, and also a crosswalk here. Uh, so pe uh, pedestrians are going to cross vehicle traffic at controlled points there and there, after which they can go down here and through here and attach to bike paths without having any interactions with cars. Yeah, but my, my question is, if you're coming from the east side of that north walkway, heading west towards the new hotel. On the north side of the garage. Wouldn't you encounter cars entering and exiting, and you'd have to cross that to get to the protected walkway if out you're to talk, State If you're Street. talking right here? Right there, the entrance to the garage, please. Yeah, uh, that garage, that secondary entrance is only there operationally for emergency <coughs> purposes. Uh, I think we learned from talking to the folks at St. Albans that every once in a while a car gets stalled or somebody gets in here and they can't figure out how to pay and they just lose it, <laughs> whatever, that, they, that the exit could get blocked and so the city needs to be able to open up a secondary way to get people out. Operationally, this is not meant to be used on a regular basis. But wouldn't they have to cross the, the 
western north entrance to get to the walkway to get out to State Street. I think anybody coming from the Haney lot is going to be going down through. The no, I'm, lot. I'm saying if you come in by the bank in between yeah. the Christ Church yeah. yep. and the bank, yep. um, but you want to head over to the to the edge of the Haney lot or behind Christ Church, wouldn't you encounter the traffic? entering and exiting the garage right there you would yeah there's yes. a, at this crosswalk and what would be there to protect protect pedestrians yeah i have a traffic control plan i just have to find it we have showing stop signs and the like is it, I don't think it's uh, where is it or at least i know there's Aren't four-way stops extra dangerous for pedestrians because it can be confusing about whose turn it is to drive and you're, you're watching the cars, you're watching the pedestrians, but you know, that can be quite dangerous. Oh, boy. And again, Meredith just brought it up again that that's more of a DRB issue in terms of the access as opposed to the design review. But we'll certainly make you know a note of that for the DRB committee to take a look at. But, but there are regulations related to pedestrian safety, um, so I'm hoping those are all in under consideration with the planning stage. Thank you. When's the DRB meeting? Monday the 5th. Yeah. This coming Monday. This coming Monday. Yep. And it's the... Steve, I think maybe it would be a really good idea if we, as design review, sent a note or had Meredith send mm -hmm. a note yes, about our... It's got some talking points that are yeah. about no, items to be forwarded to the yeah. development oh, review great. board. Great. Yeah. If, if you don't end up with a final recommendation tonight, we can just make sure we agree on all the points that you want me to bring to them that aren't yeah. on the recommendation form. Can somebody outline kind of a schedule on this? I'm getting really uh, confused as to, okay, when do you need final approval? Well, <laughs> I mean, we'll, we'll get it when we've earned it, I guess. <laughs> but but uh, uh, if, if, if if everything went well for the city, I think we would we would like to have final permits before the voters go to the poll on November sixth. Oh, um, you won't get final permits. Well, <laughs> at least have final decisions. Final yeah. decisions uh, or verbal yeah. verbal decisions, because yeah. okay, <laughs> just because. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, you know, there was a very uh, very strong goal to try to get this under construction in December, um, and uh, that would. Uh, a lot of pieces are going to have to fall in part into place before that uh, can be a reality. But, you know, having done this for 33 years now or whatever, I, 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 I can't make such predictions. I mean, it's, it's, entirely, <laughs> it's entirely up to you how fast we go. Um, I feel like we've answered the substantive issues that were brought up before. Uh, it sounds like we still have an issue on the fencing. But I, I would hope that wouldn't be a reason to hold up the project because we're happy to continue to talk about it. It's just, um, I, I, I think we need to know that there are major design issues before the voters decide whether or not they want to do this. And I believe there's somebody else who wants well, to. Well, I'm just concerned. It sounds like you might be edging towards wrapping up, and I never heard a point where you were asking for public comment. So is this the time now, or I'm happy to wait? No, go right ahead. Okay, and, and, and questions. Yourself as well. Yep. This is, I'm Sandy Vitztoom. I live at 14 Loomis Street. And before I make general comments, I wanted to say personally how excited I am that, that we might be getting a kind of good-sized hotel in town. I think it's going to make us, uh, as a city, able to do a lot more things um, culturally and for business than we have before. Um, I don't know if I've said this to this group, but um, I happened to meet an independent contractor for National Life from Maine, and she was brought here for a week, and she was put up in Waterbury along with 60 other people. And they never, ever came to downtown Montpelier in the whole week. And I was shocked that, that, that as a city we've, we're losing this kind of business opportunities. 
Um, I'm actually speaking tonight on behalf of the Montpelier Heritage Group. I have a couple of questions because um, I've not come before this group before, although we've had other members here. Um, I'm going to first ask questions that I think are specifically design review, and then in the interest of time, tell me if my other questions, which are going to be at the end, if you would rather that they go to development review board, okay? Um, the first question is about my, the drawings, the re renderings that I've seen. Um, it seems to me they're applicable for a couple of reasons. One, it's permitted use downtown, but we're trying to understand the gateway relationship of this uh, uh, of this building, both coming along Memorial Drive, but also um, it's it's kind of on the gateway down State Street towards a Capitol complex. So um, I actually don't know that I've seen any from the ground renderings except of the bike path, and I'm totally uh, wondering what this looks like from Memorial Drive. If I were in a car driving by, and would I see the State House? Have those renderings been done? And I missed them. You missed them. OK. Uh, yeah, they, they've All been right. presented on a couple of occasions. OK, that's fine. I totally understand I could miss them. I'd love to see them uh, sometime. And There's one on the boards when we turn the lights on that's OK. And also from State Street, have you folks looked at what this building is going to look like behind the Episcopal Church? Because, for instance, coming down Elm Street, that's quite a very big, important view in the city. Uh, we presented views of that as well during the approval process for the hotel. I don't know that we've revived those of late, but... Um, Fr from the ground level? Yes. Yeah, okay. I, I'm, I'm trying to find them as we talk, but... Uh, well, that's fair. I know that's kind of hard. Um, the other thing is, uh, typically balloons are flown, and we I mentioned that at a meeting uh, a while ago. I think it was a DRB meeting. Have you indeed flown some balloons so that we can all see exactly the correlation between the renderings and reality? Um, nope. Um, that was a city decision. I'll let them discuss that. But I believe flying balloons is a public hearing and it would have had to have been warned. And so we were told not to do it. Bill, there was a question about flying balloons and the city's stance on that. Um, uh, can you come up to the microphone, Bill, please? We, we felt we were confident with the renderings as far as height and all that, the, the various things. We didn't think the balloon was a necessary. Well, we consulted with our folks and didn't think it was necessary from a, a permitting perspective or for anything else. We had uh, the information. There's uh, telephone poles there that are approximately the same height as the garage, and they were pretty easy to, to look at. So that was our, our call on. lights on, they can hold up the board, which you had from Memorial <coughs> Drive side. You've got the, you're the light man. Oh, people are ready for a light. Here we go. Yes. Um, right next to your arm, Bill. So that was. So that's the parking garage is coming right through here. So if you're, I think this was taken from like the Shell station. So the even the, the church towers. And the uh, end is way over here. It's way over here. I'm just this is, gonna, this is the view, the view from State Street. That's the view from State Street. I'm just going to suggest again that if the city were willing to fly some balloons, I, and I know it's difficult because you're both the applicant and the reviewer in this situation, but if you could fly balloons for three days, um, then people driving by could actually all see for themselves. Yes, you can see the rest of the over there. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So this was not, this was done by someone else besides Correct. Correct. That was something that was presented by Stephen Whitaker at an earlier hearing. Okay. Okay. Um, then uh, another question, I, I hadn't really become aware of the alley until tonight. Um, and I actually, if there must be some other accommodation for hotel guests with their little rolly wheels trying to get to the hotel besides having to be outside and on the alley, I hope. So uh, that's one question. 
Um, and then, uh, in general, uh, I've talked about this at the DRB meeting. I'm totally confused. This how this it seems to me we're trying to develop clear streets and clear walkways in the city. Um, when I grew up, it was a village of back cuts, back court shortcuts, and then a lot of them are gone as we're trying to make the city more clear as an urban pattern. Um, so I th think I heard, Bill, maybe you can correct me, is that we're building a street out to between the garage. Is it going to be a street or is it an alley between the garage and State Street? Well, it's a complex of things. It's a, um, it's a, uh, uh, in the first case, there's a legal easement that's been granted to the city over Capitol Plaza to create essentially a private road that extends from Taylor Street through the Capitol Plaza site and then back out to State Street. Anybody who's experienced the parking area back there now knows it's, it's a little chaotic in terms of how the parking spaces are laid out and circulation is kind of ad hoc, you know, it's just sort of what's left between spaces. Um, this will organize that into sort of a clear circulation pattern connecting those two major streets. Um, essentially, uh, the trip from the Haney lot to the garage is similar, although that's not going to be something that's used on a regular basis for uh, access to the garage. It's really a pedestrian, bicycles, secondary access, and, and other uses. <coughs> um, but but uh, es essentially, those what you see today is what's going to be there. Both okay. Cases. So then, in that case, the we're we're create the city is creating more of a non-conforming lot, and we it has no street access then, it, except that by an alley with an easement well, over the, it. The zoning ordinance allows for uh, lots to to uh, be connected <coughs> by easements to the public way as long as they have the right dimensions, and we have met that requirement. But and then this is functioning as a way in and out for 300 and however many vehicles. I mean, it's, they're not going to be there for 24 hours, so it'll be more than 700 trips a day, probably. Right? Well, we've submitted a traffic analysis. I'll let that stand on its own. But uh, there's 206 spaces back there now that are used every day. Mm -hmm. So this isn't like we're taking a cornfield and doing this. This is a parking lot now, <coughs> and and you know, building this garage will will supplant some existing parking lots, which offsets the impact a little bit. Um, but, in, but in the main, by providing you know, this parking, it makes Christ Church's prob project more likely. It makes you know, all the downtown business owners have access to <coughs> parking. It's so I just want to say that overall, it feels like what is now a pretty um, sketchy road for Northfield Savings Bank between that and the, and the church is going to be a, more of a uh, road, particularly people who are not from the city trying to find a way to use the parking garage. And it seems to me it needs to be a street. And it's just, um, this is, that's a personal thought. But if it is, it needs to have a sidewalk on both sides. It needs to have safe parking itself. I'm wondering if you're going to lose some of the parking spaces that are in that kind of alley now. Well, the plans have been submitted and the numbers have been counted. I mean, we're going to have 348 spaces at the garage, and we're going to have 55 spaces left on the surface of the Capitol Plaza. That does not include the remainder of parking on the Haney lot, which I don't Yeah, and then I, that was one of my questions. How many spaces are you thinking you're going to lose on the Haney lot? 40. 40. That's already factored into the net. Okay. Um, then uh, my other, I think, is pretty strictly design review question is about the solar collectors. Um, which I had not heard of before tonight. I think it's a great idea. But in my experience with um, other Vermont towns and then actually other states, if an owner is thinking of having a second phase that actually is supposed to be part of the first phase of permitting. So I don't know why you would mention that you might do that in the future and that you're building for that potential, but that's not being permitted now. Because somebody in the public asked about it, and we want to be, you know, we make all our projects solar ready. Yeah, you but know, then it should be part of the permit process, right? Because well, then it wouldn't, yeah, that's how it's typically done. We can deal with that, but I, I don't so know that the city is committing to build it today. Yeah. Can I that's address correct. that? Yeah. So, the, as zoning administrator, if, if that 
were to go up, it would be something that they would need to get another permit for before those were put on. So Absolutely. they're just showing sort of a, a my understanding, and correct me Greg, if I'm wrong here, is that this was sort of, like you said, a response to a public question as to how it might look and to show where they could put in the infrastructure so it could be done, but it, it wouldn't it wouldn't get right. It's not getting usually, if there's a leading all. towards the future of something, it's better if it's included up front. Just yeah. pointing that out. It's better to have it done and and say, okay, yep, it would work or not work. Um, my understanding is it wouldn't put you over the height limitations. No, that wouldn't be a so problem because it's a six. I don't know district. why it would be an issue. It's it wouldn't. Issue. It would increase. It wouldn't increase your FAR. There's there's two issues, and and uh, one is that the city is maxed out on their um, net zero metering situation, so they don't necessarily they can't necessarily just use a net metered solution mm -hmm. for this. And I, I think the other is budget wise, which it wasn't it wasn't part of the original charge, and you know we've had to add some other features here to, to get this to where everybody finds it acceptable. Um, Obviously, we want to include it in our thinking always. Um, whether or not it happens right away is something that's really up to the city. Um, we just want to know that our uh, design will accommodate it. Right. I'm, I'm just simply pointing out if it were a private owner making this application, they would probably be asked to be more specific about it, even if it were a future phase, is, is my experience. Okay, well, I'm, I'm trying not to be vague. I guess the, the, the thing is, is we've included it in our thinking because we didn't want to shut the door on it. It came up as a question from the public, and we explored the possibility, but I haven't been told that I have an extra half million dollars to spend oh, on it. Oh, right. So. Well, it's a question of future phase. Um, then, and these are just things I w want to ask to make sure, because I don't know. Um, how tall is the building in number of levels from the very lowest level of parking to the top level is it four that's what I had heard well there are essentially but because the because the floor levels slope yeah it kind of goes up in half increments <laughs> I guess at its tallest it's four and a half stories four and a half okay just curious and um, I know it has to be 20 feet back from the top of the bank is that right and that there's absolutely no construction within 15 feet of the top of the bank for the riparian buffer zone <clears throat> That's an open question. I'm sorry. I, I was just going to say, so that, that, if you come to the DRB hearing. Is that a DRB thing, issue? We're dealing with the water setback and Great. riparian buffers then. Yep. It's not within the design review regulations, so this can uh, be that's where really addressed. I was it. guessing. Yes. I put it right at thank the you. end. Oh, thank you. Um, all right. Thanks. Thank you. Laura Rose again, could I just ask about from Main Street, when you're looking across the bicycle bridge, um, wouldn't the garage obstruct the view of the Capitol there? If I'm on Main Street at Shaw's and I'm looking, wouldn't the garage, especially with solar panels, um, the towers itself, you said the garage was four and a half stories, but the towers are taller than that, um, and the solar panels are even taller than that. Should we get that far? So now I'm looking across from Shaw's, across the river, and I don't believe I can see the Capitol anymore. It is a beautiful view from Main Street. Uh, we submitted a visual analysis. It's, um, I, it's in the package. What's interesting is the existing Capitol Plaza is six stories tall. And so this proposed hotel is five stories tall and the garage is four four and a half stories tall. Uh, we took a photograph from across the street there on Main Street oh, looking down the bike easement. And that's what you see. It'll be right in the way. Well, here's the garage. Here's the garage. Here's the Capitol building. Here's the hotel that is. the Capitol Plaza, which you can see a clear story of We construct these things mathematically. I, I will vouch for their accuracy. I know people look We're at them and go, I can't believe it. Tip of the dome and nothing else. That's the whole dome. There's no, the dome. I this is the hotel the that is. Of the dome. Well, this is the hotel that is previously permitted. And here's the garage. Yeah, I, I just don't see the bottom of the dome. I just see part uh, of it. And I, I'm not quite sure. You, you. you see as much of it as you do today, you will in the future. It's, 
It doesn't jump out at you as much as you think right there. Uh, so that would, you submitted the most recent ones of those on, for the October 1st hearing. That helps you find it on there, for any, if any of your, your folders are labeled. Yeah, well, they were all labeled, but... Uh, see those views in here. They're not on this drive anymore. They must be on the Batman drive. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah, maybe the, maybe the um, city council for 10. No, that's somebody that's to design reviews today. Yeah, was it the 926 city council maybe? And you then, I then got them on the first and provided them on the first? I don't know. I'm looking here. One about that city council 926. Yeah, no. Nope. Uh, city council 926. Yeah. I just don't see. I don't see them in here unless they're in this set. No. no. Sorry. But we did. We did well, submit that. It's. It's in the public record, right? Yeah. I mean, you've got a copy of it. And here. they're they're and they're available on the website, on the city's website. Thank and you. Did you have an additional question? Yeah, I just wanted to mention that that view there doesn't show the solar panels, so I do think that the dome would disappear should we be allowed to add the solar panels. I just wanted to. There's been very little public discussion of the uh, fire safety. Um, in reading the report, I know that the Montpelier Fire Department recommended that there be um, hoses in the stairwells, which would require, of course, heated stairwells. Um, could this be um, an expense that could be avoided, and wouldn't it uh, result in a place where possibly teenagers or homeless people or other people may want to congregate a heated stairwell in a parking garage. You could access it if you were kind of behind the exit door and the person exiting didn't see you and you grabbed the door. Then you could be inside um, and you would be in the heating. I know that the um, code requires that we have to be within 800 feet of a fire plug and I believe we're only 40 feet from the State Street fire plug. Um, so I'm wondering about the expense of heating the stairwells and also the expense of heating the roof to melt all of the Vermont snow since there is nowhere to remove the snow to. There's nowhere to push it. We'd have to scoop it up in dump trucks. What kind of cost are we looking at to melt Vermont snow all winter long? Bill, I know you mentioned the um, heating on the roof. So um, there's a lot to unpack there, but first, uh, first of all, uh, we have agreed to the fire with the fire department that we would have a dry suppression system in the building, including dry standpipes in the stairwells. What that means is those norm those systems normally don't have any water in them. Uh, they they're, they have a they're, they're maintain a vacuum in the lines, so that if a head ever deploys, the system floods and then the water comes. So, uh, no, we wouldn't we wouldn't be heating the stairwells. We're not planning on heating any portion of the building. Um, and the standpipes in the stairwells, which are the hose connections you talked about, the standpipes are um, are dry unless they're charged. So they'd only be full of water. It, it was in my discussion with the fire department that they said that that would have to be heated to be functional. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Wasn't there wasn't there needed didn't there need to be like one small space that was heated, or did they did that change there's the a, design change? Uh, there's a we're still talking about the need for a server closet for the equipment that runs the uh, parking equipment. That's mostly that's that's going to be handled with with uh, one little mini split because it has to be air conditioned as well. Yeah, no, I anyway. We this is something we can bring up in front of the DRB because it's not really the design. Yeah, well, the design makes I don't think. Well, but we're not planning on heating any of the stairwells. But you are heating the roof, and that's part of the design. Uh, it, it was requested by Public Works that we explore the use of district heat to uh, to melt the snow on the top deck. That was one of two options that we discussed with Public Works to remove snow from the project. The other was a uh, tow-behind snow melting device, which I still think is a good idea because you can use it in more than one place. But in either case, the snow will be collect any snow collected is going to is uh, is going to get melted rather than piled up. Um, 
I don't expect there to be a lot of snow on the intermediate layers. It would just be the top layer that would require this. I have no idea how much that's going to cost to run, but this is the uh, city has this district heat system, and they really would like to extend hot water to this site to have that possibility. And so we've said yes. I, I'm just wondering about the breakdown of the maintenance budget because I'm sure the heating was considered in that. Is it not a separate item in the budgeting? Um, yeah, I can't speak about budgets. That's a bill issue. Thank you. Um, you know, first of all, these sorry. aren't sure. Thank you. Um, First of all, these aren't design issues. But second of all, uh, we, as Greg said, we're not planning on any internal heat cost because the, the building isn't going to be heated. We're exploring district heat. Um, we're already paying and running the heat system, um, so it would just be have its own heat exchanger and come in. Obviously, we, we could uh, fig figure that in. We're in negotiation with the hotel, and, and ideally, if we can uh, bring the line to them, and use it for the garage, then it's a win for everybody uh, in terms of, of that kind of thing. So those are still being worked out with Greg and with the, with the hotel, um, but we don't expect a whole lot for heating costs. And so we're pretty comfortable with our operation budget. Thank you. I'm, so, I'm really sorry. I forgot. I had one more note. Ahead, I, m Sam. I misread what it wrote. So the other thing is, um, I am a little bit concerned. What is the height of the posts underneath of the walkway that, and the pathway that shows up in some of your renderings as being elevated, it's kind of like stilts? Oh, along that ramp coming up? Yeah. Oh, well, it, they go from nothing to six feet tall, something like that. Because I, I know uh, the police have had problems in the past underneath some of our bridges, the people living there in the winter. And um, I also know that the Heaney lot uh, historically has had severe problems with drug, drug use and actually probably doing less than good things to young girls. And um, I wonder if we're not creating a possible new village location for these things to happen. And um, I know security cameras can help with some of that, but... Um, Maybe you're going to deal. I'm, de I'm sure you folks have thought about that. It seems to me it's a design issue to have all of that square footage up off the ground. And I just, I, if it's not design review issue, I'd just like it to get on the list for development review. Thank you. Well, yeah, I, I sense you're looking for a response. Um, things are on stilts and things in that area because we're, we're using that as a... Uh, portion of our flood control management program for this for these combined sites um, dropping the well maintaining the grade at, at uh, 518 for for most of that area it offsets enough flood water that we can build this project without increasing the impacts on flooding in the area uh, we've conducted a extensive computer modeling of that and it turns out that uh, balance is close enough that if, if there were a flood that the, this project would impact it by a few thousandths of an inch. So uh, substantial, substantially neutral in terms of its impact on flooding, which has been a goal right along. But that's why a lot of this stuff is on stilts as opposed to just filled up or buried. Um, that and we want to make sure that we maintain this garage as, as an open air garage, which means it's, it doesn't require mechanical ventilation. Um, we just make that by virtue of keeping the ground floor open because the side against the church and over on the hotel is at the lowest level is completely buried. So we need those openings to avoid having to mechanically ventilate the garage, which I think is a good thing. And it is lit, you said? Here. It is lit, and I understand that the police department has been working with us on getting the correct security system. There will be cameras. Cameras, um, lighting. For the most part, we you know, this was a design choice we could make that we don't have to have, the garages don't have to be, or the stairwells don't have to be enclosed at all. And sometimes that's a choice people can make is to not enclose them. Um, but in this particular case, because this is qualified as an open garage, we can enclose the inter intermediate levels with as much glass as we want. And so that's what we'll do. As you can see at the top of those stair towers, they've got a bit of glass on them. And I think they're more user-friendly when you can walk up on them and see into them without 
sort of thinking somebody's hiding behind a door, so I didn't want to mention that. Perhaps the Northwest one could be the operational <coughs> one at nighttime. Yeah, we can always we can always limit access to those things with uh, howler panic bars, but um, you know, I would hesitate offering that unless there was somebody who lived next door who wanted to go around and turn them off occasionally. Um, so I don't I don't have anything additional to offer. Any any further questions from the board or? Would you run, just quickly run down the items <laughs> <laughs> that will be passed along to? Okay, so, well, and this is, are you in a space where you want to try and do a recommendation sheet, or is this a, my taking thoughts to the DRB and then the, the application coming back to you again? I, I, I'm prepared to vote. Okay, because I know I know the fence, the the picket fencing, is an issue, yes. um, and that's both along the the ramping yes. and yeah. along the bottom of the building, yeah. right? So that's one thing you want to have a recommendation on. Um, you want to do you want to have bike racks on the boardwalk as well, or just inside the garage, or have it as an option? Option. Option. I'll leave that as an option. Okay. Um, to do art or and or signs at the both of the different sort of alleyway entrances on both sides to make that welcoming. Okay, I'm gonna make sure I go through everything I've got here. Um, structural elements you like number one option. Number one Put, option. The number one option. Make sure it's muted, muted raised. Dark black gray yep. coloring um, so again so it doesn't compete with the other right. yep. components representation is for as a placeholder only yeah representation yes. placeholder only and, yeah. do, and you want that as a competition but within the scope of the design that we've that you've decided upon yes okay um, and then mm. we've got hold on. Uh, any comments on the, I mean, we talked about the height of the solar panels, but that's really just future. It needs to come back here. It would be another, yeah, another, another permit. application. Yep. Again, it's conceptual only at this point. Yep. Uh, good with the fixtures for the lights. Um, the 3000 Kelvin warmth for lights is good. Prefer black. For the exterior fixtures, that's what, right? I think that's what they plan. suggested okay. in the plan. Yes. Okay. You're good with the materials for the cornice. Cornice. Thank you. Well, we no talked turn. about GFRC I mean, as an we, option. We don't want EFIS. Okay, so yeah. so GFRC is what you talked about. There was another option too, right? Polymer composite. Yeah. Okay, and those are both okay. Yes. And again, they would all be the same granite coloring. Yep. Yes. Yep, I have that. So as are all the rest of the bands around the building. And typically, the, typically the lower ones are actually granite. Okay. So, so it's so only that it's only that cornice that we're going to have yeah. made up. The cornice. Well. The cornice will be to match the granite that's on the rest right. of the building, and it's an option of polymer composite or the GFRC. Okay. Yes. Right. Um, option to put in fixtures or mountings to be able to hang temporary banners over the large artwork? That's a good idea. Yes, and then, like you said, that could be eye bolts, bolts below the cornice work. Which yeah, could, we'll just, we'll figure out some, some attachment points and we'll just provide them so that people aren't drilling through my flashings and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> um, and maybe also make sure we run that by police department. Okay. Does that sound? What was the coloring of the flashing again? The, Black. Black. Yeah. Okay with that. That's. Okay. I mean, that's yep. the application. That's fine. Yep. Uh, steel frames going around the openings. It should be fairly easy to provide some eye bolts to. Right. Yeah. 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 Fasten yeah. stuff. Too. It's a good look. I, I. I hope all of you get a chance to see the, our project up in South Burlington, where we've used this detail because it's. 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 
Yes, it's on Shelburne Road, right? Yeah, it's near the McDonald's and the movie theaters down there. Yeah. So for the fencing, do you want that to come back, or are you just there's a specific look you want for that? I don't think we need to hold it up. I okay. Mean, but it would be nice to have a better solution. Okay. Okay. We'll stipulate to that. And make sure we show something to the development review board. Okay. And we can send we can send it in to staff so you can look at it before the development review board meets. Functional but classic. <laughs> and, and not so there you go. That's a that's like nice. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, not what it is. Functional but classic. Yeah. Um, just something that's compatible with the, the rest of the building and with the rest of the, the entire property and the entire project. Okay. 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 Yeah, because I didn't feel like we could come to uh, In the, uh, options to get, make them. To back it up just a little bit, yep. I apologize. In that structural steel scheme, number one, yeah. was that proposed to be a, a powder coated black? Is that what I, or where is it? Yeah, I've, everything would get galvanized and then powder coated. And, uh, I like the black because we're doing that with other things here, um, but you know, I mean, those bridges are often green or or kind of a or rust, rust red. <laughs> and the black, I, I think with the I think a rusty red kind of color would just flatten with the out brick. with the, bl the brick. Black is fine. I'm happy with the black. I mean, that's what I'm doing yeah. in South Burlington. It looks sharp. Classic looking and it's subtle. Yeah, yeah. It'll match and again, the it's not like competing with the greenery or anything, any of the other components. Yeah, and when we actually detail, we'll we'll put some little details, you know, little stiffener plates and stuff in to make the connections interesting. You know, lots of extra bolts, or rivets. I wish. I don't. I, does somebody do riveting anymore? Okay. You're welcome to it, Frank <laughs> Gary. <laughs> <laughs> I guess. Yeah. I mean, rivets would be perfect. Okay. Um, so make sure that there's an opening in the security fence on the ground level on the east side, since that wasn't actually in the presentation. Um, sorry, going through a bunch of different notes here to make sure we, and you guys were all good with the renderings for the view sheds. Okay, just wanted to make sure. I think that's all I've got. Oh, and the, the decking material we oh. talked about, right. tropical hardwood, like okay. an EPA or something EPA like is. that. Yeah. Okay. Sustainable. Or FSC, no doubt. Right. Or, yeah. uh, or whether we can get a bunch of uh, black locust. That would be, uh, yeah. That would be preferred that, yeah. if we could source yeah. black locust. Okay. So, mm -hmm. same idea. Yeah. Black locust preferred. Yeah, I don't know. What did they use on the Burlington bike path? I think that's eBay. Because I'm astounded at how well it's held up. EPA is, EPA is it's a nice. solid piece of material. <laughs> it won't even burn. It's incredible. Oh, yeah, I put an EPA siding on a house I own right now. It doesn't screw a nail very easily. No, you <laughs> pre-drill everything. Yeah. I it's a good way to break a lot of stainless steel fasteners. I'm yeah. sorry, James, how do you spell that? I-P-E. E-P-E. -E. E -E. Okay. It's also known as ironwood sometimes. Okay, thank you. Okay. And I can get any other details from the recording, I think. And that was the last item that and is a decking option. If, if you have anything a little more, if you have any drawings that show the landscaping, then you'll go before the, you know, before the development oh. review board. Is any of the landscaping supposed to be edible? Depends how hungry you are. <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, um, By humans or deer? Yeah. <laughs> That's it. Um, I'm going to, no. I was going to think I could put it behind that without knowing. Yeah. Were you hoping for berries or something? Well, it occurred to me as a possible a solution to one of the problems. Uh, uh, getting people like gotcha. this going like underneath this and the thing is to plant a bunch of raspberries or something. Oh, yeah, no. It makes yeah, it not that, very that interesting to get through that. That could be, that could be uh, effective. Yeah, I, I, I agree with that. Something, yes, absolutely. It just makes that. No, no, I, that's a great idea. So you want them to, to before, yeah, before it goes before so. the I'll DRB, you want them to do that? It would be helpful when you go to the DRB to, you know, show this. And then if you have a rendering showing the plantings you're proposing as well. The rendered plan has, that should be in there. 
I think that's sufficient. I think he's well, looking for us to merge, merge them together. I'll merge them. Oh, okay. Just merge that with merge, this. Merge well, that with that. To that. Just with we, you know, we, we certainly can. I, generally speaking, we turn that layer off because mm -hmm. it covers up so much information that we're trying to share with you. Um, well, but it's just easy. being able to see both would... It, it, it would be easy enough to turn it back on. Be a nice on perspective. Yeah. But you'll be surprised at how much this gets covered up by trees. But it's just going to cover everything yeah. when they're in full leaf. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And a lot of 3D work on this one. Uh, Steve, my, my preference administratively, uh, there's still some outstanding issues. Uh, the primary one I see is the signage and treatment of the two gateways. We have a meeting on the 5th for the D for the DRB. Yeah. And I, I would, I, I think this has been a lot of improvement. But from a procedural basis, I, I think it's hard to prove, provide things where there's, approve things where you don't have as close to final plans as possible. I don't know what your schedule is on getting an additional. I, that's the one thing that I would really like to see is that treatment and, okay. and not not just leave that hanging up in the air. And I think it's almost as a, uh, thinking about it as a precedent of sort of, uh, this is a big project, so it's a little bit different, but saying, well, you know, we're going to fix this, we're going to fix that, so I want my approval now. We, and, we have a whole signage plan that we're showing to the DRB. With traffic, could it be a part of that? Yeah, I think he's just asking for that additional layer of wayfinding stuff. Yeah, I yeah because, because we have all the yield signs that. and stop signs and yeah, stuff. We've all been detailed. And that put that on that plan for part of the DRB. I know that probably should have come to, to us, the signing well, stuff. I know it, we may not have authority over that, but it, certainly we look at an awful lot of signs. Um, so the signage plan that we have right now is just stop signs, okay. signs to 89 and Route 2, and like yeah, yield signs and no enter signs, they're all strictly traffic signs. Okay. The so rest the of the sign package that is like, here's oh, yeah, here's the, the garage the and and that kind of stuff was going to be a separate application. Any kind of true sign signs versus traffic signs, and I there hadn't been yeah. much discussion about the okay. kind of signage you're talking about yet. So so, so without sort of. Um, Going all the way into designing that, though, I think it's okay for us to indicate on the site plan a couple of spots where we need to have that wayfinding mm -hmm. sign stuff. Yeah, and, and uh, you know, I'm thinking, of, you know, something more than just sign, something that's really kind of a welcoming right. design so that people know when they're walking down State Street and walking through that parking lot, this is the way you get to the river. Okay. Could, right. Because for somebody that doesn't know, there's no way no, to know the river not, is there. You're right. Could, right. Does it make sense to have that as this is something that needs to come back with the rest of the signage package? That we not not the traffic signage, but yeah. wasn't there another well, layer norm, of signage we that you would were hand thinking that about? Off to somebody like Sparky Hog, right? they would handle that. Yeah. But Hampton can, Inn signs mounted yeah. on the building, mm -hmm. the enter and exit signs, and all right. of that. And it seems like some of this would not be on our property. And it would be more of a city thing, perhaps. Well, I understand what Eric's. I know what he's mm -hmm. saying too. Yeah. I'm just trying to. I'm just trying to figure out a way to so make sure you have enough time to really give yeah. yeah. properly. Incorporate that as part of this, or have that as a separate. I. I, I don't know. I just want to. It's a great point. You know, uh, make sure that we're not approving yep. some kind of an idea. Well, we're going to fix this. Yep. Uh, well, that's what I'm saying. Either yeah. put it as a condition, ask the DRB to put it as a condition as they have to come back through the permit process to get that sign or bring it for on Monday. I, I'm just trying to, I'm just throwing out options. Yeah, I, I, I come I, on the 5th? Well, this would come first and other people who are currently on DRC for the 5th might get bumped. Because I think we have five or six applications for the 5th right now. <laughs> I don't know. I, I just, uh, I'm, I'm just. Yeah. I think this is is more than a sign issue. Mm -hmm. That's all. That's. What do you feel comfortable with? I mean, do you want to just have that as a total separate application, 
or uh, to add on to this rather than have all that as part, well, that, as part that, of this. If this that implies we approve this as designed, I, I don't like that idea because okay. I think it needs to happen. You think it needs to have this sign? Yeah. And okay. I think if we approve this and say this is going to be a separate application, then the implication is, okay, you can, whenever you want to do that, you can do it, you can apply for it. Uh, do, well, you could put a time limit yeah. on when they have to apply for it, but you don't, if you don't like that, I'm, I'm just, I'm well, just I, trying to. You know, there's other people options. on here. I don't know whether I'm just being too picky here. Feels to me like this is a big project that should probably happen, and that like being able to go to the voters before November six. Yeah, like, I, I mean, could, you know, we have a have meeting you, on the fifth that should be fairly easy to look at the limited items and get that done. Since we discussed this thing, so, so that, that would include this wayfinding stuff that you're suggesting. Yeah, something on the signs. What else would we have to have ready for Monday? What, what other thing? Oh, for the to just to show them the the traffic management plan signs. You mean? Uh, well, the, the the sign stuff. I, yeah. I meant the fences. I yes, fences. I was looking at you. <laughs> the, the fence, the fence back. If if this cart creates too much of a problem, I would just. Well, I, like I said, we'll get our approval when we earn it. Mike, you have something to say? Yep. Yeah. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Mike. Yeah, Mike Miller, and the planning director, and so I just the the wayfinding piece. I think. Um, you know, my, my two cents on that would be I, I, that's there's a separate project that is being run by Montpelier Alive for wayfinding. I just don't think I would recommend developing a separate wayfinding package just for the just for this and have it built into this. I would probably go and task the wayfinding committee on Montpelier Alive that's been doing the wayfinding project for the rest of the downtown to go and simply make this consistent, you know, and, and develop a plan that's consistent with what they're doing for all the other wayfinding. Yeah, I, I'm thinking about more than signs, though, Mike, in terms of designing entrances that have a, a you know, a, a, a larger visibility. It's not just signing. It's making these entrances visible from the street and looking like entrances to the river. That's, that's mm -hmm. my point. It's, Signing, I, I, fine. If it's just signing, we can figure that out. So it's making structural differences to the building. Yeah, so I, I, I don't know what, uh, what uh, Greg would suggest in terms of, 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 of doing that and uh, making sure that these are pretty obvious entrances. I don't know whether it's uh, some kind of an arch, a canopy, just yeah. an idea that uh, uh, that's some sort of symbolic gateway. Yeah. Arts, uh, art and street furnishings to reinforce the idea. Um, yeah, I, 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 th I think I get what you're driving at. You know, I'm just, I just would like to find an efficient way to get it back in front of you because I don't think yeah, it's yeah, I, a lot. And I recognize the need to, to, to act on it and, uh, and well, give something to the DRP. I just observed that the, the connection between the garage and the hotel isn't really changed significantly from the prior approval, and that had a gateway to the river, the same walkway going through, and none of this was required or asked at that time. We're all for doing this, but I, I do think perhaps we're adding a whole different standard, and there is no signage now showing anyone going down through the Heaney parking lot to the hotel we're, so again we're not opposed to it but I, I am a little concerned about holding up a project um, seeking a standard that is higher than an already approved project that's virtually identical okay. my two sides I, I, uh, Bill I do think the project has changed enough in terms of, of blocking the river that we need to emphasize this access that's all um, I agree with that. and I don't want to I don't want to hold the project up I just want to make our process uh, something that uh, if you don't want to do it conditional that's fine whatever that was I, best to make that recommendation i, I mean i mean it's, either. it's your options you can have it come back or you can have it as a they need to show it to drb but oh. it's not going to be your option to view it you know, yeah, either it comes back on the fifth 
how, how many things do we have that have a real? Is it the fence? And the, the fencing and and this are the, the things that you really need to look at. Otherwise, you've got clearly what right. your your con your recommendations are. I and also, unfortunately, want to bring up one other thing, which is I don't feel like we talked about the railings, other than they were talked about sort of as. I feel like right. So the fencing railing. Exactly. Yes, that's what that's what we were saying. That that would, if this comes back, that would be one of the things fencing to show railings. options. Like all those. Yes. Is what the public really interacts with, like touches and feels. Like mm -hmm. I want that to be. Good. Yeah, those two things would come back. More than just like mm -hmm. plopped there, but really understood. And maybe it is more than, but way I understood it from. Well, yeah, this meeting. No, I mean we got a you know we got a cut sheet. We gave you something fairly plain spoken and generic, and, and I think well, right. we're I mean this shows the horizontal, what yeah. appears to look like a cable rail type system, and then the cut sheet for the gates that are on the building are not the same. Right. No, I, I think we can deal with that, but... Uh, I don't want to hold the project up. For no, no, yeah, I understand if, that. If, if, this were, something right away about that. if this were a condition expressed to the DRB, I could still come by and show you our solutions on the 5th, but you'd have the flexibility of not having to take a further vote on it. Either that, or have me back. On, I mean, if, if this is gonna if this is gonna be a sticking point and it's your call, then then we'd like to come back on the fifth because I'd really like to wrap it up with the DRB right later, later that evening. <coughs> well, and that's it. Would it, it can come back on the fifth? We just some people may get bumped. That's all. We were looking at potentially bumping some people if somebody ran long on the fifth anyway. If you could have your motion ready to go though, or however you know, it's, it's yeah. I mean, it's a re it's a recommendation forms. So yeah. Let's do that. I'll, okay. Yeah. I'll come back on the fifth. If I'm back on the fifth, we'll try to address those, those few yep. two remaining yeah. issues, and then the oh. rest of it will be recommendations I, forwarded to the development review board. I can draft those up so that we can sort of have an attachment sheet for the right. recommendations that you okay. can. Okay. Maybe it would help if uh, I would make a motion. In advance. You know. Can we get it in advance? So I'll send it over. So we approve ready. the project. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, we're talking, it's Monday yeah. now, we're talking That's week right. from today. Okay. Eric's trying to I, make a I would make a motion that we approve the project with the exception of these three very specific items. Does that make, does that make any sense? No, that makes sense. I mean, that, and then, and then that those items need to, need to come back to us, and then I would assume it would be very quick, uh, and it would be before the DRB. Does that make sense to you, Bill? Or is that? I mean, I oh, think you really you can't. You know, I'm asking if I don't want to hang it and not the rest. Yeah. Of some little thing hang this project. I up. think the I, vote on November six is important, and I think that like if we're showing a vote of confidence towards something and not like holding it up, I feel like that offers our community yeah. some sort of something. And says, hey, you know, we're going to have a hot news item. I said since November fifth is just one day before November sixth. Um, well, but I think there's a lot of banter about it going around oh on front yeah, porch forum and various other places. And if there is at least some sort of non from our committee that this can 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 we go through the list and approve it and then just um I put a condition I, I don't think I think can't don't I don't know if you can uh, yeah you can't partially approve it. What you can and maybe Mike Stop. Mike's still here Mike knows this a little bit than I have. I think what you can do is maybe just say those are the last three items that you want to review. Yeah. I mean, would, it, would the whole, everything still be open for further discussion at the next hearing? I don't think you can close just part of the evidence. Can we but I also don't can think we you can. Can we scrub hole and then we can pick it up? It. It. We can, you can, yeah, I don't we think can you can approve it. You can, you can, I mean, we've, we've discussed already that the, Gateway yeah. sort of entrances like and the railings and fence, those are the last items that you need to, that you want more information. We've on. straw pulled before though. Can we straw pull now? I haven't. That's for me. I, I, right? Procedurally, you can, I think you can you can straw pull early. I think um, you can certainly go through and make. Um, a process decision that would go through and say we're only going to consider these three items. The hearing itself technically is open to everything. So if the public had concerns about design elements that you weren't that you've already made your decisions on, 
I think you're obligated to because the the decision is still open. Yeah, but from a from how you manage yourselves, you guys can go and say we're not asking Greg to revise anything other than what we're giving him and he's agreed to come back to talk to us on these three points and we're going to constrain ourselves just to these three points. Um, that, that I think would be the prospect. I don't think there would be a, a, you know, there could be a straw poll, but it wouldn't be binding. That would be my interpretation. Right. I, mean, that, that, I think that's the point. Okay. I think the straw poll is that everything's acceptable, but again, those three items would like to take a look at uh, the railing. Is there any way to show a, I mean, we've seen, we've seen some of the other uh, some of the other pictorials of what it looks like from the front, but nothing like this showing from this side. Okay. You're and asking for an elevation from where? Landscaping. So in other words, what we'd be looking at is a color uh, representation of what this looks like from State Street. Like an elevation or a perspective? A perspective, just, just, like, that. just like this. Just like that, just... So you can see what that entrance looks like going between the buildings and on this side. You're suggesting, I couldn't see what you were pointing at, but looking down the whole parking lot? With, or you with everything, with, with this new package here, is there a way to, you know, show a perspective looking at it from State Street so you see what it actually looks like? Yeah. From, from State Street? From State Street. Yeah. yeah. From, and we saw some yeah. of the earlier, earlier versions we did. Yeah. But, it, but, but to then throw, put in the more welcoming entrance possibilities, right, yeah. for the what, pathways. I mean, that, that way you're including your landscape plan, again, and, and mm -hmm. a color and, and representation of what it's actually going to look like when you're walking down to that entryway yeah. to come to the back of the building. Right. And to so the either river. a northern elevation or a Okay. And, yeah. and I think since the suggested first signage, you're not designing the signage, right? Right. So, but some suggestions for yeah. sign so content and location would be a really helpful thing. Special that. Right. Okay. Yeah, I, I think we'll sort of say there's going to be a sign here, it's going to be this big, and this is the purpose of it. And then when Sparky Potter or the committee that's doing this around town comes up with what they're supposed to look like everywhere, because I, I saw a presentation by that group. You know, they've, they've got things that are going to hang on street poles and stuff. You know, I think we definitely want to be keyed into that. I think, I think Mike's right. I mean, this is something that wants to be integrated. So how do we do this? Take a straw boat and then uh, say there. this is a straw boat, and, but it does, in the next meeting we're only going to consider these three Yes. Issues. That makes sense to me. I don't vote. So, no. <laughs> with, with the exception of the three items to be addressed at the next meeting on the 5th, uh, all in, all, everybody who is in favor of the other components, uh, raise your hand. Okay. Three items left. Uh, yeah, and I, obviously, a lot of moving parts to this. Some other things are getting done, so I've got more time to focus on that. But we'll we'll get that to you as quickly as we can this week. And I thank you for your time. Thanks. And again, if thank you. If we can get copies of that as soon as possible, we'll get it. And, you know, uh, some of it will come quickly. I think we're going to take we're going to have to take some time to think about what Eric wants because I it's it's more than one idea. I think that needs to happen. Yeah. And all of us can deal Just with some of the stuff. Okay. Yeah, you know, from looking for well, I'll send it to the staff. Yeah. yeah, right. She can right. share. No, 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 I understand what you're saying. Yes. Whether it's an elevation or perspective. So, okay. thank you. We have this. We have this packet. We're getting there. The only it takes this. this. It, oh, it might have been in the bigger packet where we, we don't had one that didn't out well. Okay. But again, always. Yep. From the other side. Just that. Have to go there. I like coming to Montpelier. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I know. You feel like it? You're the to start the commuter rail. I'll try. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So, here's a question for you. I know we need to wrap everything up, but I do have 
packets for Monday with me right now for everything else that's currently on the agenda. Do you want to wait until I get everything that Greg is going to provide and then put it all together so you have everything in one envelope? Yes. Okay, I'm going to hold on to those then and then and get them all can, in the... If we can either get printed material or by email or, or whatever um, for the additional items. I mean, that's hopefully it'll be printed and just added to these packets that I have now and then put... But I'd like to get that as soon as possible. Yep. You know, yeah. Within the next, if he can do it in the next couple of days, yep. I would just assume get that sooner than later. Yeah. Oh, ag agreed. Um, the the if I if for some reason I haven't gotten that from him before mm -hmm. end of the day Thursday, these packets are going to go in your oh, oh, no. at the police station to okay. pick up, and then hopefully I can just email it to you because Audra's out of the office. So okay. trying to make sure you get that through proper channels. <laughs> um, and I will write up what we've got in here for the recommendation sheet so that you guys can review that and mark it up if you need to so you have a script for... It's hard. There are a lot of moving parts of this. Oh. And usually we review much smaller projects and we ask for specifics on smaller projects. We have to. And, and, yeah. And there's like the fencing, the fencing of the railings, that's sort of, you know, just right. thrown in. <coughs> it should look better and be more specific. So, and again, that would be sort of between a rock and a hard place because you don't want to hold up, uh, hold it up, but you want it to be complete. Who knows what's going to happen with this, but I want to be able to be confident that the design review has done its due diligence. We didn't, we didn't just push it along push this I can accept that I accept and that Eric. I understand the deadline and I'm perfectly willing to work with you know, I just did want to sort of at least show some confidence to the world that we're behind the project and then some of the, you know some of the items uh, you know like everything's up on piers uh, who knows it might become a homeless encampment underneath but you deal with a lot of That's that a stuff. police issue. Yeah. yeah. And, as you need to. Yeah. I mean, at some point in time, if they need to do, you know, some six-inch metal fencing underneath, we hope the not. block it off. I mean, you do what you need to do to right. deal with the problem. I, I, I like my it's raspberry solution. But yeah, solve it. Um, so <laughs> do we need to adjourn at this point, or so, is there other business? Well, we, we need to. Agree. We have agreed to uh, yeah. to table that and <laughs> yes. coming back with the three items on yeah. the fifth. Right. And everybody, I mean, we didn't make a motion. Yeah. No. No. no I just. I just mean. But yeah. Yes. I'm just doing other business and adjournment. Other, so, because are you still recording? Yeah. Because <laughs> we haven't adjourned okay. yet. <laughs> so do I hear a motion uh, to adjourn? Yes. And the next meeting will be back here on November the fifth. I second that second. motion. All in favor. Thank Back you. on the fifth.